Sometimes. Well, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm definitely not tech, but let's hope. Okay, so it says it says that it says it is. So let's yeah. just hope it is and just go in. <laughs> coming back here to, to 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 see you. Okay, so hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to you and to everybody else in in Facebook land. Hopefully, you guys can can see us. Um, my name is Kim Vopney. I think most of you know me if you've been on my pages um, and I'm known as the Vagina Coach. And today I have Andrea Dobbs from the Village Bloomery. And I've titled today's talk, Kegels and Cannabis. Um, and we're not necessarily gonna be talking about Kegels per se, but just bringing attention to the, pel the pelvis and pelvic health, sexual wellness, and how CBD, THC, and that the world of cannabis can tie into that. And it's, um, so Andrea, before I pass it on to you to, to introduce yourself, I'll just tell you the, the audience how we met. So we have a, a colleague and friend, Shirley Weir from Menopause Chicks, and she was creating this book and it was co-authored by a number of us and Andrea and I were both co-authors in that book. So that's how I first heard about Andrea, um, met Andrea at the Mokita Live event and then I started going to her store. I had I have never used CBD cannabis, but it was something that I was very curious about. And initially, for me, it was actually about um, about anxiety. So I had had started dealing with anxiety kind of out of the blue, and was trying all these things to help. And somebody suggested, well, one day it was kind of a joke. I think my mom said, well, why don't you just smoke a smoke a joint? <laughs> and I kind of led, oh ha ha. And then I said, well well, maybe I should. And, and so that kind of started this investigation. And now I have been using products from your store for, I don't know, maybe a year or something, I would say now. And, um, and I've learned a lot from the people in your store. They've been amazing. The books that you've recommended, I've also been kind of consuming from different, you know, those um, editorial magazines that they have. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning a lot, but I still have a lot to learn. And I'm really excited to, to share well, for you to share what you know, because you have been such a, a wealth of knowledge. So I'm going to pass it over to you. And if you can tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you, you know, kind of what you did in your former life and what got you to now, you know, having this amazing, amazingly beautiful store in Vancouver, the Village Bloomery. Thank I love you. it so much. But yeah, so handing it over to you. <laughs> Great. Well, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, because this is definitely a, a, a subject that's close to my heart. Um, I call myself a late bloomer because I too came to cannabis quite late in my life. I, of course, I tried it in high school, had a lovely time once, and then another time was not so lovely. And I just thought, that's ah, not really for me. And I didn't put a lot of energy into to cannabis until I was 48 and I was deep in the throes of perimenopause and felt awful, <laughs> just awful. I just, that's the only word I can use. I, I didn't recognize myself. I felt, like even my skin didn't feel comfortable to me, like everything was off. And so I really started to dive into how I could approach my health. If we dial it way back, um, I'm raised by a woman who always used plant-based medicines. So I kind of leaned towards that kind of use anyways. I always went to naturopaths and looked at what I could do with my diet first. Um, and I also happened to be working um, at a, at a a very well-known shop in Vancouver. It's called Women's Wear. Uh, it was one of the first shops that has designed around women's health. So sex toys, yes, but they took a really kind of um, proactive approach around making sure that, you know, things that had phthalates in them were not present and that women chose tools based on what they wanted to achieve, not what they should achieve. We stripped away packaging because a lot of the packaging suggested something completely different than what you might want to explore right? Right, right. and also i don't look like that and that's intimidating and so there's all kinds of layers in that environment so i i learned a lot there and i really learned around um, how many women are struggling with um not feeling sexual how many women are not sleeping how many women have painful penetration how many women have painful um menstrual cycles, endometriosis, just a wealth of people, uh, women sharing their sexual health challenges. So I really was sensitive to that and, and that kind of fed into my exploration as well because I had found myself relating like, oh yeah, you know, first of all, I thought the last thing on my mind was having sex. Why would I want to do that? I don't even want to look at myself or get out of bed. <laughs> like I was not there. And um, 
And so I did explore cannabis in a very dynamic way. I went and bought a chocolate at a shop. I didn't even think about the fact that A, it was not legal yet. I had no clue. And B, I didn't think about like, what might this feel like? And I didn't know what questions to ask. So I basically just went in, spoke to a young man who was really uncomfortable with my questions, but he did his best. And I said, my breasts are hurting and I have no libido and I, I just feel like crap. And he sort of slid a chocolate towards me and said, well, some people use this for PMS and he was doing his best. And so I just ate this chocolate and walked home and thought, well, that tasted kind of funny, but whatever. And within a few hours, it was not pretty. I was really not doing okay and my kids were just mom oh my god you're greening out so at least they knew what was going on but I can imagine that if you hadn't even contemplated with so many hours after I'd eaten it I, I would have thought I was maybe having a stroke or something it was very unusual oh, wow. so that's not why I decided to get involved <laughs> it was how it felt after I basically when I came down I had the best sleep I had ever had in my life and I actually thought wow even if I have to go through that, I might opt for that once a month just to feel like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realized, you know, there must be another way. And I started really diving into cannabis and I learned that Queen Victoria, the, you know, way back, used the Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth, one of them, one of the queens back in the day uh, used cannabis for her pen film men menstruation. And I looked even further back and there was like a thousand years of history of women using cannabis for their sexual health. And I thought, wow, that's crazy that I didn't know this. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really something that spurred on more research. I learned about oil drops and tinctures. I learned about topical creams. I learned about the lubricants. I learned about vaginal inserts or rectal inserts, which are also called suppositories and had quite, a, you know, quite an awakening, um, which actually started one of the main reasons that we opened a, a cannabis retail shop. Cause I was thinking, you know, my experience had been so strange. I had to walk into a place that was quite male dominated that felt not like there was an attention to the retail experience. Right. I, I, in hindsight, I understand that it was illegal. They could have got raided at any time. Right. I was not aware, but I was like, why isn't it beautiful in here? And look, there's, you know, so I, we were able to bring that to the space and our timing was really good because the city was just licensing shops and legalization was kind of in the, in the air. And so we became quite, active in trying to ensure that legalization came through and that we would be able to make it through. Um, in hindsight, it's a little bit like careful what you ask for, because on the one hand, way more people have more access, but there's a lot of products that used to exist that no longer exist. Um, and, and I'm also very torn about the amount of plastic and waste. And there's a lot of stuff that I, I, I kind of look at and think, well, we need to make some big changes in this space because I don't feel as proud of what I'm doing as I used to. Wow. Um, yeah, environmentally, I'm not feeling good. There's a lot of packaging and a lot of, um, there's not a same, same access to things like a lubricant or like vaginal suppositories. This is put in women's health always on the bottom. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not marketable. And I'm like, well, actually, yeah, really <laughs> actually, yeah. we make a lot of buying purchases. We are the we, we are the decision makers. We purchase more than anybody else on the on the in the nation does. And if we could um, see products reflecting our needs and our values, then it would be successful. Yeah. Um, so the the downside is is that I think because it's a recreational market, the the producers who happen to be largely male don't really understand how a product like a, like a vaginal insert could right. be recreational. Right, right, right. And my answer to that is when you're not in pain, it's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna call that recreation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a ways to go, but I do feel like, I feel like we're making enough noise that I think we're gonna see in this, in this year, um, lubricants and inserts, I'm pretty sure. Okay, that's, that's yeah. So. I want to I want to talk about lubricants and, and products in a second, mm -hmm. but first, if we can kind of go to the basics for people that really, you know, I, I still consider myself very much a newbie to yeah. this, and I, I, yeah. I'm understanding bits more. But so people think of cannabis as kind of as pot in a way, yeah. as, as marijuana, and yeah. and with with CBD and THC there's a difference there so I kind of want to have you explain there's the cannabis plant and mm -hmm. and all of the 
as I understand it, there's, there's, you can use the whole plant, you can use part of a plant, you can use an isolate. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what exactly cannabis is and all the different components to it? I'll try to make it real like cannabis 101 simplified. Um, there are, I guess, three products that you might consider. There's hemp, there's ruderalis, then there are the broadleaf plants, which are traditionally called indica, and there are narrow leaf um, plants, which are traditionally, and I'm saying traditionally, not that it's a science base, but it's it's sort of a vernacular that are, that that grew over time okay. through people who were involved in cannabis. So that the narrow leaf would be sativa. Generally speaking, ruderalis um, has very trace amounts of THC and quite a lot of CBD. And then both the broadleaf and the narrow leaf are traditionally a little higher in THC and, and have uh, broadleaf would be more sedative, generally speaking, and narrow leaf would be more energizing, generally speaking. Um, there are more than just two cannabinoids. There are many, many cannabinoids, more than I can name, uh, as, as there are terpenes. But I can tell you that THC is the psychoactive, uh, potentially intoxicating um, the cannabinoid, whereas CBD, it is ten, they tend to call it less psychoactive, although I would say it, because it is, um, it does affect the, the way that you process, you may feel depressed, you may feel um, anxious and CBD may be able to, to alter that expression. So for me, that's psychoactive, but it is not intoxicating. You can take quite a bit and, and, and the most, the, the worst I've ever heard is someone felt sleepy. So um, that's, that feels a little less intimidating for most people to, to enter into exploring cannabis products. And so um, just, I just want to, just to clarify, cannabinoids, yeah. so THC, CBD, hemp would all be considered cannabinoids, is that correct? Um, no, hemp is not a cannabinoid, no. Okay. So cannabinoid is, is, is a, a hemp is a fiber or for the right. most part, or the hemp plant was the ruderalis. Um, oh, okay. yeah. So um, terpenes are cannabinoids. Cannabinoids, yeah. And there are things like THCV, which is which a lot of uh, people like athletes might look for because it regulate helps to regulate body uh, the way you process sugars. And so diabetics are also interested in that. Uh, it, it usually is quite hard to extract in large amounts. So you're never going to see. Well, I'm not going to say never. You're not going to see a THCV product in the marketplace, but it is sought after. So people look for plants that are high in that. Uh, CBN is known to be rather sedative, so people are looking for plants that are higher in CBN. Um, and CBN is actually naturally occurring in cannabis that is, is a little older and not being stored properly. So if you grow your own and you kind of store it in a jar and over, over time, it will naturally become high in CBN and then it will be a sedative product. Um, so there's tons to learn there and I can, I can share some resources with you because I'm not a scientist and I really yeah. <laughs> I struggle to also explain things sometimes. Yeah. Terpenes are really important. Terpenes are basically the essential oils of the cannabis plant. Yeah. So whereas, you know, linalool is also found in lavender yeah. and, 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 and limonene and found in lemons. I mean, these are, these are plant-based terpenes that you're going to find in other products. Um, cannabinoids are also present in echinacea, say for instance. There are, they are in other plants. Um, it's just that cannabis happens to be uniquely high in these in these uh, properties, and they fit directly into the human, like they're, they're they're called phytocannabinoids, really, in cannabis. And when we have them in our body, they're called endocannabinoids. So we naturally produce endocannabinoids, and under stress, we become deficient. And when you're deficient, that is when you are you know you become diseased, you become less than optimized. So it is interesting for me to explore cannabis in terms of um, homeostasis, not necessarily intoxicating. I enjoy that as well, but in terms of my daily life and in my, uh, my overall health, I'm looking at cannabinoids as creating a balanced wellness. Right. Um, and, and multiple modalities to explore. So uh, when you're looking at CBD, for instance, you can apply it topically. You can take it in an oil tincture. You can take it in a capsule. You can smoke it. You can vape it. You can drink it in a CBD beverage. I'm drinking a cup of CBD mint tea right now. <laughs> um, 
yeah, so there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, modalities that you can explore. Um, they're just coming out with these little dissolving on your tongue strips, which seem pretty exciting. Hmm. Is there is a there shot. a benefit? So just to go back to the can cannabinoid, so the endocannabinoid system is we have, if I understand correctly, we have cannabinoid receptors almost in our yeah. body. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So then, so to um, be clear, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead first. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you're right. There are there. That's a that's a key thing to consider. Basically, the, the key cannabinoid, uh, endocannabinoid that we produce is called anandamide. Okay. Anandamide it is produced in our brain. Uh, we, we have receptors in our brain, in, our, in many of our organs. Women in particular have a lot of receptors in their uterus, which is really cool. Um, and when you are pregnant, you are, are really uh, really ripe with cannabinoids, which is really kind of interesting. That's part of your whole gestational period. Uh, so you have CB1 receptors, like I said, on the inter internal organs, and then the CB2 receptors are more uh, underneath the skin around the nerve endings. So neur neuropathic pain often addressed through topical application without any intoxicants. Um, when you for instance, explore a, a, an insert or a suppository, you're bypassing the liver, which also greatly reduces any kind of intoxication. So the liver is a key point, is a key piece in terms of how you process cannabis if you're going to ingest or smoke, uh, ingesting for the most part. Yeah, but yeah. So kind of my, my next question then, which, which I, I'm glad you went first, was is there a benefit so the the, the result you're looking for, the feeling you're after, the mode that which you take it could influence how you feel or, or if you if you attain 100%. the feeling you're looking for, correct? Yeah, 100%. So, like honestly, as, as intimidating it is for people, um, I find that oil drops or smoking is the easiest approach. Oil drops because you can take a single drop and, and slowly increase it till you experience a feeling. Chances are one, two, three drops, you won't feel a thing. You might feel something at five, six, seven, and that's for you to explore because there is no dose to tell anybody, start with this, it'll feel great. Right. 2.5 might feel horrible for you, but you know, seven might feel great. I have no idea. Like you have to explore for yourself. Yeah. Um, smoking is great because, or vaping, I guess you could explore because it's so short lived. Ingesting tends to last an hour to five hours depending on who you are uh, some people have even taken a, a dose of something on an empty stomach not had any effects gone to sleep woken up in the morning had breakfast then it kicks in so that can be like oh that's not what i was expecting so there are a lot of kind of uh, it, i wouldn't go to edibles first personally although it's the most enticing for people because it's in a gummy or it looks yeah. pretty or it's not yeah. intimidating smoking it allows you to determine very quickly, am I someone who responds to broad leaf or narrow leaf? Am I someone who responds to CBD directly? Because you get the inhalation, you can take one puff, wait, and see what that feels like. That is good information. Right. Uh, I personally realize that I respond much better to narrow leaf. I like things that make me feel brighter and more energetic. Although at night, I tend to want to be calmer. So that's when I might, might use a broad leaf. And, and I do find oil drops tinctures more effective for me at night because no matter what I try, generally speaking, if I smoke something that's a indica, I'm going to first feel a little bit active, but if I want to feel sexual, that's great. But yeah. then I feel like, oh, I feel kind of in my body and very sensual and, yeah. and then I'll go to sleep, which is nice. But if I just right. want to go to sleep, it's straight oil, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, <laughs> like none of that, just oil. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the the different modes then you've talked about. So you can rub creams on, and I, as the the reading I've, there's a lot of um, athletes like people who are dealing with yeah. muscular pain or or pain from injuries are using yeah. a lot of tinctures and salves, so creams yeah. or, or what have you. So yeah. that's one. And then the smoking side. So on the smoking side, I I don't love the concept of ingesting something into my lungs so can you comment yeah. a little bit on the differences between smoking cigarettes versus inhaling you know, yeah. yeah so right now the science and use is kind of neck and neck because scientists haven't been able to do big studies on cannabis because it was illegal and it's taken quite a long time for them to get 
licensed or approved studies from the Health Canada. Um, so the smaller studies that are available, uh, and there have been many, many, many studies, they're just not peer reviewed by the medical, right, yeah. uh, show that in, there isn't the same there isn't the same response from your lung from inhaling cannabinoids. Definitely you're going to be in, inhaling some plant matter. So some people who are maybe um, hypersensitive to inhaling might not enjoy it, but there is evidence that people who are asthmatic, people who have COSCPD, um, emphysema, benefited from inhaling cannabis. Even lung cancer benefited from he in inhaling cannabis. Wow. Um, because it is delivering cannabinoids directly to the source into your lungs, which is full of CB1 receptors. So the science, I can't say, yes, smoking is great for you, but it is definitely not, it is definitely less impactful than smoking tobacco. Um, okay. Never mind the fact that there aren't all the additives that they use in tobacco, and it's not the tobacco per se, it's all the other things, right? And the, yeah, yeah. the filters. And, yeah. Okay. So, but at the same time, um, if you find what is called a broad spectrum uh, vape, it might be a little gentler and that's where they extract the, the, cannab the oil from the cannabis plant. Uh, sometimes they introduce uh, fruit-based terpenes to add some flavors. Um, again, there isn't any long-term research for me to say what it is to inhale terpenes. I don't know. Um, to date, we haven't seen anything negative. What we have seen is that you want to be careful that you are, um, if you are buying cannabis from an unregulated source, because those do still exist and many people don't even know that it's not, not um, legal, that you want to be sure you're not inhaling propylene glycol. That has not proved to be very beneficial for people. Got it. So okay. that's just something to be aware of. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's on the smoking side. There's the, the salves, there's the smoking, there's tinctures. Um, yeah. And there's and we'll be clear just because tinctures traditionally are in an alcohol base, uh, those are not allowed in the legal market. So we, we end up calling them oil drops because they look, they come in a bottle, they right. deliver them with a dropper, but they're, yeah, they're not okay. in an alcohol base. Okay. So yeah, so there's oil drops and then there's, there's sprays that basically go under the tongue. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what I have typically used the most. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a beautiful bath soap. That's gorgeous. Yes, so that's, <laughs> that's gorgeous. I, I haven't, yeah. I was just that there's actually a local store here where I am now that, that I was checking out the other day too. So they had teas that, that sounds yeah. like the one you're drinking and they had some bath, they had some salves. And so, and even, you know, the magazines I was looking at have all like there's so many different companies now with products mm -hmm. and it's unbelievable. So I'm, yeah, I'm interested in the bath soap. Uh, it's beautiful. Well, and yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, you gotta okay. just look for those little self-care treats. <laughs> yeah, so that could be, you know, part of part of our sexual wellness can be the self-care piece as well. And as you said, you know, you may enjoy smoking or taking an oil drop as a way to kind of heighten your awareness to get into the mood, or it could be used topically or even internally with suppositories mm -hmm. and lubes for people to, as you said, to kind of get more directly to the source, maybe managing pain more, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So if you think about the, the stereotype of someone smoking a joint and getting red eyes, yeah. it's directly associated to cannabis being a vasodilator. THC okay. is a vasodilator. So vasodilator meaning bringing more blood yeah. flow. So placing a THC oil drop or a lubricant is I, I hesitate to call them lubricants that's kind of what they market them as but they're not a viscous kind of water-based product they're for the most part mct oil with thc um and i struggle to see the difference between the, the oil drops that they sell for internal digestion so uh, to the topical ones. So in my opinion, they do exist. They're just not called, <laughs> they're not called pleasure oil is what they used to be called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I would potentially look at it more for a, a clitoral stimulant um, because it does increase blood flow and it does increase sensitivity. And that that's really pleasant. I just like to go 
back a little bit because I, I, I don't want to get to the shortcut. A lot of women kind of just come and say, just give me the lube so I can get to, to. and then it's like, it's, it's not just that <laughs> you do. I find that increasing your sleep is key. So if I can sleep, I start to feel more in my body and I feel yeah. more open to the idea. Yeah. If I'm feeling joyful, if I have a partner who I enjoy, that's important. Yeah. So like, if you don't actually like your partner, the loop yeah. is not going to help at all. <laughs> so I, I really want to encourage women to like, just to really own for themselves what they need. And then that that's sort of like icing, you know, it, it, it's, beautiful to have your sexual awareness heightened it's beautiful to have the feelings go with you know your physical feelings match your your emotional feelings right. um, and that's what i found cannabis able to help me do okay um the broadleaf indica smoking for me like i said really brings me into my body i'm very aware of everything the, you know i feel wind i feel my hair i feel everything and that's very pleasant um, and it can be really nice for meditation can be really nice for exercise. It could be really nice just for being alone, but it can also really be nice to share with someone who's also in that space who feels really physical and, and sensual. Right. So right. that's, yeah. Okay. So with the lubes then, and you said, you know, it's unfortunate we have governments and what have you in the way of being able to, to have more access to this. But if you say, as what you just said, if I'm clear, the oils, that we're using ingesting in our mouth, I could take my oil mm -hmm. and I could put it on my finger and insert it. Yeah. I could put it on a tampon and insert it. And it's it's yeah. essentially the same thing, correct? So yeah. Yeah. I, I I would have to qualify that everyone is sensitive. So MCT oil is for the most part medium chain triglyceride, or it is a coconut or palm-based oil. Okay. So you do want to ask about that. I just at our store, like we do our best to have nothing palm-based as much right. as we can. Yeah. Uh, and I'm always looking for alternatives. There are some products that are in um, sunflower seed oil and there are some that are in olive oil. I don't know that, I, I mean, it's everyone's choice. Uh, coconut oil is a fairly popular lubricant, but some people can be sensitive to that. So right. you, you do have to qualify that. I would love to see, in the States, they have water-based THC lubricants yeah. um, and there are alternatives. Here we have very little. I personally have had very, I've had no problem with the MCT oil topically. Um, I didn't use that internally. I used, um, although, well, you know, it gets there, it gets in there, it gets there um, <laughs> in other ways. Um, but the, uh, the vaginal inserts that we used to have access to were in cacao butter. Um, and that was also very pleasant. I'm, I'm torn around people using tampons. It's a, ble a bleach paper product. I don't know how, I encourage my children not to use them. Uh, so all of my daughters are using uh, menstrual cups. And what you can do is you can coat your menstrual cup and insert, and that can really reduce um, cramping. Yep. Um, uh, there are uh, menstrual sponges that you can also use. That That's uh, something I consider. And some people, if they can find a, um, a gel cap yep. that they, that they feel good, good about a vegan gel cap. Uh, you can fill it with oil and insert the capsule at night when you're sleeping and it would dissolve. So those are some options. There are also uh, DIY um, suppository um, recipes. And because there are products on the uh, market that are called concentrates that are available, you can buy a half a gram of very, very concentrated THC. Some people, it's called dabbing. Some people take this, this, this viscous um, kind of, it looks a bit like um, like a yellow molasses or something. It's got the consistency of molasses. Um, that could be heated up and, and mixed into a base. And then you would be able to, because you know exactly how many cannabinoids are in that package, right. usually about 750. You could make yourself inserts based on many of the, uh, the recipes that are out there. And is it, so if I... And again, I know that dosing is personal and you'd have to yeah. start totally low and, and work your way up. So that was, that was always what was recommended to me. Topically, topically, yeah. not so much. Okay. So I was going to say, if yeah. I was taking five drops in my mouth, would I, mm -hmm. would I do the same if I was putting it internally or would it be more probably? Um, I would say, yeah, I actually can't answer that question. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you're just using it clitorally, five to seven drops is probably fine. 
but um, if you were going to be using it for pain uh, and for men's, like for uterine yep. issues, anything around the uterus or cervical, um, we used to carry inserts that were 10 milligrams, 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, and 100 milligrams. And people, depending on what their journey was, would choose. Generally speaking, menstrual cramps responded to 10 milligrams. Um, uh, people with endometriosis tended to use the 25s and 50s, depending on a cycle, and it was usually worse during their menstrual cycle and less so, so they would use it throughout the month. Yeah. Um, and then people who were working um, with ovarian cancer or uh, cervical cancer were using higher doses uh, as part of their protocol, and that was usually with some support with someone who worked in the space, of, like a naturopath who was open to cannabis or something like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so the, the reason back to the reason why they're not available in Canada is, is just because they don't, they don't see it as a recreational use. Is that the main hiccup? Hold on. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, they can make them, Yeah. but they're just not. Okay. <laughs> so across, they, they yeah. recognize that soon. Cause that, yeah, cause there's a, there is a couple of companies that actually have women who are very active and, and, and aiming to get those on the market this year so I'm, I'm very hopeful okay, yeah good. yeah because there's there are some companies in the states and they can't ship to Canada and so there's a lot of nope. people who are really really intrigued but just simply don't have access yet yeah so, so the Foria brand uh, you may have heard of that's in the states the, I mean it's very wildly successful over there yeah. that is an MCT oil with a with a THC um, and then go love CBD is water-based as I understand yeah. Yeah. yeah that would be really great yeah, yeah, I haven't seen yeah. that. And that's more of an actual lubricant as opposed to a pleasure oil. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although there is the vaginal moisturizer that uh, Pure Integrated Pharmacy that uh, Shirley Weir is part yeah. of formulating. Um, I think that would be a, why, a, a good combination is the clitoral stimulus with the THC, just get the blood flow and the sensitivity, and then the, the, the lubricant. Yeah, um, well, that's what I was going to say really. too, the people who are already using the, the hyaluronic acid insert, the mm -hmm. gel, yeah. You could add some you could add some oil to that and put it like put it in at the same time essentially, I think. Yeah. 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 Cool. Potentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. love to see I would love to see more more research. I'd love to see more people uh, collecting data around this so that we could have informed conversations. A lot of this is anecdotal, a lot of this is trial and error, a lot of this yeah. is personal. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's unfortunate that it, we're still <sighs> We're still kind of walking through yeah. the, you yeah. know, the forest, trying to uncover what it is that is should be information to us. The last, the last I recall, I remember seeing that in, um, I can't remember which medical book. I don't know if it's the Merrick Manual, but one of the big sort of books that physicians study. There's something like, like hundreds of pages on the male reproductive system and 12 pages on the women's reproductive system. I'm like, dude, yeah. <laughs> that's where you come from. <laughs> Let's have a little more insight, you know? No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, okay. So back to the, to, so pellet pain, menstrual cramps, could, is there more benefit for it being inserted internally than over the abdomen or could it be no. over the abdomen? It's, it's very unique. Yeah. So a lot of people find like a bath soap just yeah. soaking it because your skin is absorbing all those cannabinoids and it's very relaxing. There's not intoxicating. It's only really reaching the CB2 receptors unless yeah. you drink your bath, which would not be recommended. <laughs> um, well, um, so that can be very helpful. Just getting an overall relaxation and just being able to sit with your, your uterus doing what it does, you know, um, ingesting small amounts of THC just again to get that big muscle relaxant and just to be able to to sort of ride the waves of those cramps without it being overwhelming those yeah. could be great rubbing it into your back or onto your stomach can be great yeah. um, and then and some people really opt for the internal because it is quite quick yeah. and it allows for that just like oh yeah and then so externally around the vulva so so things like vestibular denia and dyspareunia like pain with sex those types yeah. of pain, sort of external or, or inside yeah. pain syndromes could also be helped with that. And is there 100%. So how, like, so I'm a person who has pain, I want to participate in sex. Yeah. Is there a 
like should I use it half an hour before an hour five minutes or is there it's pretty quick it's pretty quick topically especially in the in the vulva because there's so many it's this is a really open mucous membrane so it's yeah. similar to putting a tincture in your mouth yeah uh, it's usually about 15 minutes okay. so that's what I might do is if I was just going to explore topically I might uh, yeah I might be with myself or, or yep. just use it into uh, act, bring it into the foreplay yep. um, and, and do massage a little and see how it feels. And, yep. and if, if you happen to be partnered with someone who has a penis, you can also apply topical to the penis and then have that be part of the penetrative act if that's the way you're gonna go. Um, if it's just about clitoral or manual stimulation, yeah, I would, I would integrate the, the oil that and, way. And with the with the lubes that I have looked at and the, and the suppositories I've looked at, they are, they are CBD. So they yeah. don't have THC in them. It's, yeah. it's just, or, or just less CBD. than 0.3%. So it's the CBD yeah. only. So no yeah. psychoactive component. So there's no, if somebody, um, so you ingest it, whether it's through your mouth or you smoked, or you put it on your vulva or intern, whatever way you've done yeah. it, if it's a CBD product, you could still go and drive. You can do, like you can carry on with your normal daily activities. You're not going to get high. Most right? people, most people. Okay. Um, I, I would say some people get a sleep response. So you, better, you definitely want to try it in the evening or when you're at home and not trying to use any heavy equipment for yeah. the first few times. So you know how you react if you feel very sleepy. We've had the odd person say that they felt intoxicant and it's intoxicated and I can't say that they didn't. Um, I've, I've read that there's a, it's very rare, but some people have an enzyme in their liver that might, it's, it's a question, they're looking into whether or not that their enzyme um, mutates the CBD and, and, and okay. you, you experience it as THC. Yep. That is very rare. I've met one person who has had that experience and, and all I could say is, wow, this might not be for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in terms of it being um, a part of your sexual wellness, definitely anxiety reducing, yeah. that is a good place to be. You don't want to feel anxious if you're about to engage in any kind of sexual exploration. Yep. The fact that if you have vulvodynia or if you have painful penetration, the fact that it is very, um, it, it's powerful, it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. So re reducing inflammation would be great and, and, and would make that feel more <laughs> more receptive yep. to being touched and, and, and manipulated. Um, so I think those are the variants. I don't have a lot of experience personally with a CBD lubricant because I have not experienced painful penetration. I looked more for for enhancing the pleasure and then en enhancing sensitivity, and that's where the THC came in for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, with regards to so two questions. One is the intoxication piece. So if you yeah. have, if you take smoke rub cream on anything that has THC in it. Mm -hmm and this may be difficult to answer, but how long would you be, what, how do they know if you were driving and you mm -hmm. get stopped, what is the, what are the levels or how are they measuring if you are intoxicated? Is it like, if you have one drop or you can't drive or, and then how so long? So I, I could only qualify this by saying that Vancouver at the very least, and, and, and I've yet to see anyone in BC yet, is not investing in the uh, analytics to determine whether or not someone is intoxicated through a saliva test. The challenge with that is that your body identifies cannabinoids as nutrients. So whereas you might, if someone you know tried heroin or cocaine, your body would eliminate that in a very quick time. It doesn't want it in its body, in your body. But cannabinoids, it identifies like, oh yeah, these are good for me. So it stores it in your fat. So if I was to have a, a, a capsule on you know today, it very may show up in three months somewhere in my body. It's still in there. It's the, the traces are there. So that's you know we're, we're really pushing for uh, testing for intoxication as opposed to THC or CBD level in your bloodstream. That that it is not an indicator of whether or not you're intoxicated or not. Um, topically. It, it, you, if you are having drug testing, it might show up, but you, there is no intoxication from topical. You would have to soak in a vat of, of cream 
all over your body for hours <laughs> to feel it. I don't even know if you could get intoxicated, but yeah, like you would you would have to saturate your CB2 receptors and it would have to have somewhere else to go. Yeah. So you're saying that if, if you, that's if there was, if it was a, a, a cream that had teeth yeah. in it, you, you're saying that it would, okay, that's interesting to know. Yeah. There's, it, it's, there's no intoxication inserting some people, um, like it, as a suppository, um, usually it's a much higher dose, but it, it, you can feel some level of intoxication um, as it enters your bloodstream. Right. Uh, but both of them bypass the liver, so it is a very, it's a very subdued. Um, like I can say that for myself, I can ingest about 15 milligrams of THC and feel quite happy i would say that would be a recreational dose yeah. um but i was able to use a 100 milligram uh, vaginal insert and not feel anything hmm. so that was really a good marker for me yeah. um yeah okay and so people who you know we, we talked a little bit about the pain side and the menstrual cramps and it, as you know as you introduced and is where i definitely am right now we're perimenopause i'm i'm pretty much almost at menopause, I would, I would suspect. Um, dryness is an issue for most people with a vagina as they approach or as, as they go beyond menopause. So could yeah. these, like I remember when I had my e-commerce store, there was a product that I sold, um, this is several years ago, it, it's a, a hemp oil-based insert for dryness. So it was called In the Pink Moisture Drops. And so that same, thing could technically have CBD or THC in it as well. If, if, if could people use it on an ongoing basis, even externally for people that have dryness and irritation externally as they go through their day, could it, could it be better for that too? Yeah. If you, if you're receiving benefit from it, absolutely. I just want to alert people though, that hemp oil is very different than CBD oil. Hemp oil doesn't actually contain CBD. Hemp oil just comes from the seed of the plant, whereas the Cannab this cannabinoids are coming from the flower of the plant. Um, traditionally, and I don't know what it looks like now, but uh, uh, people who are growing hemp, hemp farms had to destroy their flowers. They were able to recover the seeds for nutritional, like people put them in their granola or whatever, and the oils, but they weren't allowed to use the stalk or the flowers, both of which are really, really, really valuable. So I'm looking for that to change. Um, you do need to look out in the drugstores and everyone and their dog is saying cannabis sativa oil. Yes. It, if it's in a drugstore, it's not CBD. Cannabis sativa oil is just a, 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 a scientific name for the ruderalis plant. You know, cannabis sativa is covers all of the, right. the plants, um, so but not the, not the flower and not the anything that contains cannabinoids. You can only access these through licensed cannabis retail shops. And as and there are also um, unregulated mail order options in BC. Yeah. People should know that unless you're ordering from the BC LDB, mail order is not currently legal, but it exists and people have 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 access. So yeah. it's it's a confusing place for sure. Okay, um, I am just going to see if I <clears throat> can pull up here. Sorry to be looking away from you. I just want to see if there are any <clears throat> questions that anybody is posting anywhere. Um, oh, now it's recording you. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so there are no questions. It's just people um, watching. People watching, so that's good. So, I, yeah. well, not good. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind. I'll say an interesting development has been the beverages. Um, so, there are beverages that are pure CBD, there are beverages that are THC, they're quite low dose. Um, so, you could find a 2.5 milligram beverage or a 5 milligram beverage. And they've been really carefully formulated so that it's an easy uh, opportunity for people who might like a glass of wine to look at this as an alternative. Um, I did find that. I'm happy to say I'm fully out of the menopause thing now. Thank you very much. But during that time, I couldn't even think about a glass of wine. It just did not do good things for me. And I really, really missed that act of something social, something to drink, something to feel like, oh, and I, I mean, I drink this much red wine 
it was nothing, but I really missed it. And that that's an interesting addition. There are some products that are made with wine grapes. So they have a bit of a sparkling wine vibe. There are um, ginger ales or very sweet and syrupy ones, but there's also uh, something that's like a beer, which is kind of fun. Um, and that's a, that's a, it's a kind of a gentle way to explore cannabis because you, you don't have to invest in a big bottle of something. You can just get a one bottle of something, share it with a friend, see what it feels like. Yeah. Um, that's kind of been nice. And it, uh, and it, and it feels a little more romantic or, yeah, cause I mean I the packaging, well, I could yeah. just go on for days. It is not pretty. It's like big old warnings. You will get schizophrenia if you use this on the CBD. I mean, it doesn't exactly say that, but it says horrible. The, 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 the warning labels on the packaging are not science-based. They're very stigma based. Yeah. And, and one in two people will be addicted. Uh, yeah, no, uh, no. There is not addiction. It is not toxic. There is habitual, and I'm sure we all have our you, those people who had a son or a child who just abused cannabis. But the thing is, it's not toxic. You don't go through a physical withdrawal like you would something else. Do you know what I mean? Like coffee or sugar. Those are toxic, um, and and you will experience negative side effects when you remove those yeah. from your body. But, yes. Um, yes. Eventually you'll have good, it'll lead to something good. But yeah, I, I just need to, I really hope that over the next few years, we're able to remove that whole concept of cannabis as being addictive and scary and a gateway drug. It is it, it, definitely not that, but like any substance in the world, it can be habitual and abused. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I said, I've, I've learned, I have been learning a lot. And mm -hmm. I think given the very, well-known, very prominent people in the world who have started companies, who are selling products, who are endorsing products, I feel like there will be, um, I don't want to say pressure, but there will be influence to hopefully to governments and to regulations and, and we'll see more availability. Yeah. I, mean, I feel really fortunate that it is much more available now because I think there are, yeah. everything I've been reading, that the, the benefits are immense for so mm -hmm. many things and really, yeah so few adverse, if any adverse effects at all. And when you think of all the pharma we have that, I always laugh, I read a magazine or I watch something on TV and there's a, an ad for a drug and it's about five minutes of, it'll cause this and this and this and this and this, all these side effects, but everybody's all happy in the commercial and then this is gonna be the perfect thing for you. And then we have this beautiful plant-based product. I know, that I know. Has you know, would, would, doesn't even have like even a millisecond of a negative effect and all of these, we would have to have five pages in five minutes of all the benefits that it has, you know? True and enough. So yeah. It's, it's so backwards. And the thing is, it's so powerful though, because it's a plant that you must respect because if anybody has had one negative experience, it can burn you. It's not something to take lightly. You have to respect your unique individual um, endocannabinoid system, the way that your body receives this plant, because you might be one of those people who really benefits from microdosing. Yeah. And then you might be in a situation where you're in a health crisis and you have to move to a macrodosing. That, that is reality. And, and how is it that you're going to make that transition, knowing how it is that you, um, how you process cannabis for yourself. Right. I've had a couple of friends reach out to me um, one with a breast cancer diagnosis and one with a ovarian cancer diagnosis and both of them are quite afraid um, and I, I wish that they had had more experience with cannabis initially in their daily routines like you might a vitamin yes to understand it more so that when you do have to look at it for something or if you're not you don't have to but if you ever are faced with looking at it for something really serious it's not so unknown and not so scary yes. i really think it could be just as useful as as like i said echinacea or turmeric both of which are high in endocannabinoids or yeah. phytocannabinoids yeah, yeah that's so interesting yeah and that was the you know I, for the very first time i think the first time i ever came to your store you actually weren't there and one of your your um, employees was super helpful and and I remember saying you know I said I would I'm dealing certainly with anxiety I can't you know I just I need help with this these feelings and I'd like to feel more calm and da, 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 da. And they said okay yeah. so I'm like what do I what? I, don't, I don't even know where to start and so they were very educational and then when I when they said here's one that you may want to start with so then okay and then I, reading the directions was a bit challenging because there's there's milligrams of 
the, the substance, but the measurement is milliliters. So however many drops you have is indicated by how much milligrams you get. So it was all very confusing to me. And I just said, just tell me how much to take. And they said, well, we can't tell you that. And part of me was like, what? what do you mean you can't tell me? Like, I'm a newbie, I need some direction. And they said, you I know. Need the best thing is just start slow, start like with the yeah. first, see how it goes and you just build up from there and then you will find your own sweet spot and that's, you do. Yeah. And so it just took a little bit of experimenting and and I I never, I, I don't seek out wanting to feel high. So I was always very cautious because mm -hmm. I didn't want to feel out of my body. Yeah. And, um, so I was always a little bit reluctant, but you, it, it's amazing. It, it is so helpful for me and, yeah. and I don't feel high at all, even though there's- And I've also relate to that. I, I really don't like to feel out of my body and I don't like to feel intoxicated. And I think that's more yeah. common for women because we have very real needs to stay in control of our body. Yes. We are still murdered by people that we love we are attacked like there are lots of things that happen in women's lives that create a fear and we're not comfortable just to be just to exist yeah. uh, generally speaking um walking down a back alley is not something at night is not something most of us do voluntarily right because yeah. we're afraid yeah. so we have a very fundamental reason to want to stay in our bodies um and for me exploring cannabis has been a way to do that. I have definitely had times when I felt out and I'm like, I don't want that. I just create an environment where I feel safe enough to be, like I'll be at home, I'll have my blankets, I'll have snacks, I'll have nothing to do. Yeah. I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna try this, this is new. Hopefully it's positive, sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not, and when it's not, I have remedies. I will drink, I'll have a glass of a lemon okay. juice right beside me, lemon water, because lemon can help cut the effects of THC. CBD can also help to calm the edges of, seed of THC. So if I've had something that's uncomfortable, I'll take the CBD, I'll take some uh, vitamin yes. C, I'll drink my lemon and I'll get a hot bath and I'll be like, okay, I feel better. That's if I've had too much of something and I don't feel good. Yeah. Other things will be really beautiful because I'll feel really in my body and really empowered and fiercely creative. And like, that's so cool. Like, I like that kind of high. Yeah. The high that makes me feel more of me, more okay. capable, so more grounded. Right so now. I've had to really explore what this high means. Yes. Right? Uh, and, uh, so and then you can get a runner's high. Like that can be really beautiful. You can get a high from meditating. That's really beautiful. I like to reach that kind of high when I feel really great. Um, so that's another word I'm, I'm kind of looking at. I'm trying to redefine and, and, and create language around feeling elevated and feeling really, really good and, and, and not feeling intoxicated. I don't think anyone enjoys feeling intoxicated. So, yeah. yeah, no, I certainly don't. Yeah, that's uh, mm -hmm. amazing. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send you, is there anything that we didn't cover that you feel is important for us to talk about? Um, not so much. I mean, like, this is a conversation that could go on and on and on, but I do want to share some, um, some resources. I think that there's, um, there's a documentary on YouTube just called The Scientist, Dr. Raphael Machulam, and I can send you the link later, but it's a really, really lovely, um, unbiased kind of, uh, story of the men who discovered THC and 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 how they applied that in, in, in israel and israel is very advanced in terms of their cannabis knowledge um so that's a really good documentary to see and and um it's because it can be challenging finding information that's not super yeah. dogmatic either like you have to have cannabis it's everything it's like it's a little heavy and you know or else you know be careful and yeah. uh, you know they're they're kind of too 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 many opinions in the mix. Um, and then there's a, another website called Project CBD. And that's really, really informative. It's all backed by peer reviewed medical studies. So for anybody who's sort of got a medical background or is really wants to share something with their doctor, that is something to do because they just need to know that right now, for the most part, we have a lot of information because we existed pre-regulation and our focus was wellness. But for the most part, shops aren't prepared to answer any kind of questions about your wellness. They don't have the training, they don't understand. And in fact, Health Canada has said, this is not a health and wellness market, it's recreation. So it's like going to the liquor store and asking for something to to you know quell your stomach at yeah. ease. It's, <laughs> that's kind of what you're dealing with the guy at the, at the liquor store has no idea right. so 
you really do have to arm yourself with your own information. You have to do your research. And those are two interesting places to start. And the world will open up. You can also, you can follow me, you can follow you. But I will always share what I learned. There are many, many books to explore. Um, and I really encourage people to grow their own. I really do. I sell cannabis. I think you should grow your own. It's, it's really interesting to see how the plant develops it's so charismatic you get really to understand the terpene profiles and what it smells like and what it looks like and it really does sort of drive home that this is just a flower this is just yeah. a plant yeah. and 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 it can be used uh, raw in a juice which is not intoxicating um it, you have the only way cannabis becomes intoxicating is to either decarboxylate it which is raise it to a certain temperature to activate the cannabinoids or to mix it with fat fat uh, a thc the cannabinoids are fat soluble so if you were to take cannabis and throw it in like a, a raw cannabis flower and put it in your smoothie you're probably going to get intoxicated but if you put it in your juice you won't so those are really interesting i've done both i've done a, a an apple ginger cannabis juice so yummy um, and I've also done it in a smoothie and went, wow, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> Lucky I'm home. <laughs> so it really is fat soluble. So yeah. <laughs> but luckily enough for me, I, I'm okay with that feeling. I, I'm not overwhelmed when I feel a little bit intoxicated. I can manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. I yeah. know we could talk for, for hours and hours, but so where can people find you? Tell us about your store. Tell us about where you are online. Where can people find yeah. you? So we're Village Bloomery and we are in the waterfall building. We're tucked away in the courtyard. So it's very private, which has its upsides and its downsides. Hard to find, but once you find us, it's very nice and it feels it's private. Beautiful. I love it. Yeah. I love Thank it. Thank you. Um, and then we are Village Bloomery. Uh, so I think we are Village Bloomery. I should look at my Instagram. I don't You're even Instagram know. Village Bloomery. I know that. <laughs> yeah, Village Bloomery. Hello. <laughs> and I am Village Bloomer. So both of those are on Instagram. We're not super active on Facebook. That's just not something we've been able to do. I think that's my own baggage because I was on it for a while, had a great time, and then it yeah. became a little too dynamic. And I thought, ooh, I think I'll deek out. I'll go to yeah. Pinterest. <laughs> you know? Um, but uh, but very active on Instagram and, and welcome and and Twitter I'm, I'm at Andrea Dobbs too um, at Twitter. Awesome. That's and always a dynamic your website, space. Your website is, is villagebloomery.com. Perfect. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You are a wealth of knowledge and and I'm sure I'll have you back another day to because there'll be more questions. Well, thank you. I really appreciate this and you're doing your part in normalizing this plant and I really appreciate it that the. the and, and the, what you do, I appreciate it. It's bringing people into their bodies, being aware of their, their sexual reproduction or of reproductive organs and, and valuing the health of those long-term. It's really important. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Thank I'd like you. to be part I really of it. appreciate your time today. And thank you to everybody who's been watching and Great. we'll see you, we'll see you again. Thank you so much. Yeah, ciao. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> Bye.